Well, watermelon sweet. In July 30th, we're having the 30th annual Triple X Watermelon Dance and Summer Social, 1403 Nance Street at the Last Concert Cafe. My friends Don Fudge, David O'Day, and their staff, and a whole lot of musicians are going to be playing there. And well, I'm proud to present to you a power failure in the KPFT studio. We got Marshall Stacks, and we got a band that will be right in the center of that whole mess on July 30th. Gentlemen, welcome to the KPFT studio, hailing from Puerto Rico, Red Tiger. Take it away.
Red Tiger is shaking the KPFT studio. They brought in enough equipment to fill up a semi. I, I really mean this. They, they work like a devil getting this set up in virtually no time. Pretty amazing stuff uh, that we're looking at here. Now, Alex, uh, why don't you go ahead and, and introduce the band, Alex? My pleasure. So to my left, lead guitar, you got Vinay, Woo! myself, drummer Alex, lead singer Red and guitar, rhythm guitar. Yeah. And you got Tico and bass guitar. And our manager right next to you, Greg. <laughs> and Greg was emailing me. He says, one of the guys said they'd been there before, and they said it was the size of a closet. We'll never get everything in there. And he started talking about three Marshall stacks. And I, right, well, I began to become a little bit afraid. Well, we've played Tetris in the past, so I think we did pretty good. What do you think? <laughs> Now, your band has been together for 12 years today. Today's an anniversary. Today's the anniversary, 12 years today. So um, we're really happy to be here with you guys playing out and just spending the afternoon with y'all. Now, for those listening out there, 12 years as a band is a pretty cool experience. But this is even a cooler experience because this band hails from Puerto Rico. And you actually migrated here a couple of years ago, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. We moved out here. I came in 2012, but then the guys came in in 2014. So it was like one by one type of situation and when you're growing up a lot of kiss metallica what were you i mean oh, what, what were we what were we doing here kiss fans metallica fan and guns and roses jen are all about my left <laughs> he's got a today has got a big flying v i mean this is the real deal i'm looking at here this is a, a man a rock and roll guitar if there ever was one and uh, where'd you find that Vinay? um i actually got a really good deal um I believe it was meant to be mine because I was looking for a guitar online and this was a used guitar online and the picture it had had like some major damage on it. I called the guitar center where it was at and they were like, dude, there's no damage on this guitar. And I was like, then what's wrong with it? Why is it so cheap? They're like, I don't know. And I got it. And here <laughs> it is. I once bought a car the same way. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, indeed. There was no hell damage. There you None go. whatsoever. <laughs> There's no power steering either, but that's another story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you grew up listening to this, uh, I would say like 1970 rock and roll, 72 rock and roll, loud and proud. And as a musician, when you're learning, when you're a child, when you're picking up the guitar, you know, you, you have something in your head you're trying to imitate. You got to make that sound. What sound was that? For me personally, um, what changed, what brought the change on was when a friend of mine showed me Guns N' Roses and he played the video for Don't Cry and you know when Slash just erupts into that solo and Slash, that moment I knew I was like, that's what I want to do right there. All about Slash. And Alex, a rock and roll drummer? I mean, you could play for a lot of bands and you're looking at uh, everybody from the backside and keeping time, but uh, this is like a lot of work. This is a full workout doing the, the drums here. If I, you know, when I first started, I was a huge Kiss fan, but if I need to pick one right off the bat, it would be Steve, Steve Smith. Uh, you can't, I just can't beat him, man. <laughs> He's crazy good, and that got me going. I had him on once. We we talked. I think there was a, a reunion tour or something. And uh, he just came back on the band with Journey, so he's right. going back now with them. So I'm excited about that. Can't wait to see him play. And Ko and bass in the corner. And uh, when did you start playing? How many years ago was that? Well, actually, um, on the bass, I started like maybe five years ago. And basically, I really like John Meehan from Dream Theater and also Billy Chien. That's the that's the beats right there, bro. <laughs> and again, keeping keeping the uh, bass line going in a band like this is a different experience than say other musics. This is pretty high tempo, high energy, balls out rock and roll, and you have to come up to speed with that. Twelve years. About when do you think the sound kind of gelled to where? You really felt confident getting up in front of larger crowds. Ooh, let's see. So we started back in '04. I would say right about oh, late '06 and '07, we got our first opening gig. We were supposed to play with Poison, and that didn't take. So the next year, we got a chance to play with White Lion, and we just looked at ourselves and said, "Is either now or never." So we really hit the rehearsing room hard, and after that, it's been 
nonstop ever since. Took it more seriously. Yes, you sir. got around. You got around some really high end professional musicians and saw what they were doing. Had an influence. Yes, I mean, it, it gets to a point where you get this opportunity and you see them live and you go, you're like backstage with them and they're talking about their show and you go like, okay, we really need to step it up because we're going to play like right before these guys. So we really need to step up and make sure we're at the same yeah. level. What's the biggest crowd you played for? Oof. Sebastian Buck. No, uh, the White Lion concert was about 4,000 people. Um, so I would say... That would be our biggest so far, for four thousand. We may have up to four thousand slices of watermelon at water, Watermelon Festival, but four thousand won't fit in the cafe. Just the same, we expect a pretty good crowd down there. People, that'll be a KPFT benefit. You're listening to Red Tiger in the KPFT studio today. If you're an, a lover of music, live music, or just want to support the station, whatever brings you out to the cafe, you're going to hear a wide variety of homespun music from. Honest to God, working musicians there. It's coming from the heart and coming from the soul. These gentlemen here from Puerto Rico have made a, a journey. And why? Why did you come here? Why did you leave home to come here and play? To rock. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and rock. Yeah, course, yeah. you, you got another one for us? Yes, sir. And we could talk about that, but that's a hell of an answer. I like it. All right. <laughs> Red Tiger in the KPFT studio. You make it possible. KPFT.org. Please go ahead and hit the tip jar. We'll be in Fun Drive next week, and uh, you can always call that number and donate then. Red Tiger playing live in the KPFT studio, and uh, wow, what 
What a magnificent sound. That is like uh, some really high-end rock and roll. And, you're, you know, the vocals are right there. They're, it's in your face. There's no question. We can well appreciate, all of us listening, exactly where this comes from. And it's hard to do, and you guys are pulling it off really nicely. You got two albums you've done? Yes, sir. He's right. You're in my face. Not just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We got two albums so far out, and we got, we're starting to record our next one. This is Alex, the drummer with the band, and uh, hey, I guess guys. you kind of keep the thing together musically. We're trying. <laughs> who does most of the writing? How does that work with this band? Well, um, usually our albums are half and half. Half half of the tracks are his and Red's, and half of the tracks are mine. So what, you bring in what? You bring in like a chord progression and some uh, lyrics and go from there? Well, I actually play also the guitar. So mm -hmm. I usually, he writes all his songs at home. I write mine, and then we get together. We usually write the whole thing. And then we start laying down my beats, and then Vinay will come in and put like some leads, play with it, and Tico comes in. Where, where have line. you been? Where have you been recording? It must be a challenge to get in the studio and capture this cleanly. Yes, sir. Uh, well, first two albums we did back in the island. Uh, we have a studio there. We have a contract. We're about to run our contract. Our last album, we'll also do it there back at home. So we'll fly out, record it, and then come back here and start hitting the road. Hitting the road, where are you traveling to, aside from the last concert cafe on July 30th? <laughs> so right now we're doing, we got July 23rd, we're doing Texas Tavern. I believe the 28th, we have Bike Nights at the Pub 529 for Harley Davidson. And then July 30th, we'll come see you guys. Have a ball. And where do you go from there? You got a lot of gigs in August booked up yet? Well, we have a contract now with Harley Davidson, so that will run through the that'll, whole year. That'll keep you busy. That'll keep me busy. It'll keep us busy, and then we got recordings after that, so we'll be traveling back to the island to do the album, cut some tracks, so it'll be playing live here, traveling, cutting the tracks, then coming back. So 12 years together, two years in this country, a third album coming. Where do you want to take it? Where do, where do you, You've already played for like 4,000 people, which is a pretty good crowd. What would be your dream gig? Ooh, well, my personal will be Madison, Madison Square Garden will be one <laughs> for sure <laughs> if we travel overseas Wembley Stadium that would be the kicker hey but hey the sky's the limit we'll see NRG Stadium <laughs> oh NRG yeah, Stadium yeah. in Texas alright <laughs> well the sky is the limit and with, a, uh, with that much energy behind the music it will take you very far this is really cool the lyrics on that last piece what was that about Red Ah, well, you know, when these girls start to teasing you and teasing you and teasing you, you want a little bit more. It's just like that. <laughs> Everybody knows that one. <laughs> what, what do you mean, man? You're begging for a little bit more of hugs <laughs> and kisses. Oh. We'll, we'll, keep, it, we'll keep it PG. Begging? <laughs> <laughs> you should have asked me about the previous track. <laughs> nah, I'll just have you play another one. I appreciate <laughs> if that. You will, if you will. All right. Let's go ahead and hear one more from Red Tiger. They're going to be featured at the Watermelon Dance and Summer Social. Number 30, Triple X at the last concert cafe. 30 years of great playing. And uh, initially, we didn't think so, but the Hightailers nice. will be back for their 29th appearance in 30 years. So ought to be a lot of fun that night. Red Tiger. <laughs>
shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Red Tiger in the KPFT studio, loud and proud. Alex, can you hear me all right? So Easy. much for PG. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, okay, it's all right. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, we have to watch our FCC and all that. I, I know. And, I, know. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't prepared in here either, so. Well. So much for that. Sorry for this, Simon. That's okay. It's we'll 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 survive. We'll get by. <laughs> and and actually, you know, um, after hearing that and watching that. There's so much energy coming off of this. People, come on out July 30th to the last concert cafe and see Red Tiger and see a uh, homegrown, homespun, true rock and roll band from Puerto Rico now calling Houston home. Where do you call home? Houston. Houston. And uh, we're so lucky to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. Big for contract that. with Harley Davidson. You're going to be doing a lot of traveling with that, playing uh, various festivals? Um. Yes, so far, like I said, we had the year booked with them. It looks like it'll extend till next year. So we'll see where that takes us, and then we'll go from there with the new album. Very good, and uh, we'll look forward to that. So uh, 9 o'clock to 9.45 at the Watermelon Festival, and they're <laughs> going to run that like a... Man, that's going to be like the, the, the KC Missouri Pacific Railroad right on time. It'll so be fun. If you show up at 8.58, they'll just be getting going. <laughs> yes, sir. Show up and with the Red Tiger freight train. There you go. There you go. I mean, these are true rock and rollers. You're going to see a show, people. I mean, if you're into it, then you better be into it and you better be there. Guys, thank you very much for coming down here and bringing all this in. This oh, is thank you for a, having us. Thank a you thrill. for everything. We'll, we'll get the electric bill and sort that out later. Yes, sir. <laughs> so Fun Drive is next week, and and when we talk about our uh, bills, you know, you can just imagine what that just Oh, it, it's did. fine. You just call our manager and send him the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me, Jack. Hey. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you. Oh, no, thank you, guys. Rock and roll in the KPFT studio, and only you make that possible with your donations. Man, that was just far out. I got to tell you, that was really amazing <laughs> watching that. You can imagine what that stage show is going to be like. Well, in my book, one great piece of rock and roll certainly deserves another, and uh, being who I am, let's do it this way. 90.1 KPFT Houston. Let's go back to May 8th, 1977, to upstate New York and Cornell University and the Grateful Dead.